Hello, everybody, and welcome back into the fort. My name is Tyler Bucks, and we're going to be talking about something spooky today for spooky season. Well, kind of. It's just the new Niv Mizzet is uh, is pretty scary. Um, drawing cards and dealing burn damage to people is uh, a nasty combo, and um, Niv Mizzet is always a divisive character. So let's get into the scariness that is going to be this new deck that is going to come when Foundations drops. Um, I'm gonna be back doing more content about uh, Foundations cards and making some Pillow 14s for uh, some of the legendaries in the set. A Pillow 14 is 14 cards for under $14 that you should get to put in one of these decks. Um, basically, here's 14 cards that will make the deck hum and uh, don't break your bank. What's better than that? So today we're going to be talking, as I said, about the new Niv Miz new Niv Mizzet Visionary. Easy for me to say, Niv Visionary. It kind of works. Um, it is a six mana. Is it card? 5-5 five, five with flying, you have no maximum hand size, and whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, draw that many cards. I'm going to be talking a lot about some nastiness today. Not too many combos. Um, I'm going to get this out of the way briefly. Niv Mizzet goes infinite with himself, and that's very funny and very on theme for him. I believe it's just the two Niv Mizzet, uh, the Fire Mind, as well as, as, well as Niv Mizzet Perun. Perun, I never know how to say that. Basically, the whenever you draw a card, it deals one damage to any target. Thus, with uh, Niv Mizzet Visionary, you can then ping all of your opponents to death and then keep drawing cards and keep doing that. Um, so I'm not going to talk about that because that's pretty easy for us to discuss right now. If you want to do that, you can do that. Another thing I'm not going to talk about, which I think is kind of the most interesting way to take this. To, I wouldn't say most interesting, but it's it's definitely on theme. Uh, Dragon's Approach. Uh, if you're going to be running one of the Niv-Mizzet infinite combos with himself, this might be interesting to do Dragon's Approach, draw a bunch of cards, possibly get one of the Niv-Mizzets, and if you don't, then Dragon's Approach will go find you a dragon, which would be one of the Niv Mizzets, and you cast it and you win the game. So that's quite an interesting combo there, but unfortunately, Dragon's Approach is around like two to three dollars, and I'm not going to just say buy seven of those because that wouldn't even be that great of a Dragon's Approach deck. So we're going to be talking about different cards today. I'm going to be doing it uh, by price. Um, so let me know if you like it by price when I do this little rundown, or if you would prefer me to group them together. Uh, we're going to start off with a new card, Grab the Prize. This is from Duskmorn. It is a sorcery for two mana. As an additional cost to cast the spell, discard a card, draw two cards. Then if the, if the discarded card was not a land, Grab the Prize deals two damage to each opponent. So with your commander out, um, it, you know, it's a loot. It's a little Faithless Looting-esque, but... You're going to draw those two cards after discarding one, and then if your commander's out, dealing two to each opponent, that's going to be draw four in total. It's kind of crazy for two mana, um, especially for nine cents right now, so pick it up. Scalding Viper is the next one. I like this card a lot. I have several versions of it from my Eldrain uh, packs, and I want to use it in a deck. I don't know if I'm going to build this one, but... Scalding Viper is two mana, uh, both sides. It's an adventure and also a creature. Let's do the adventure first. Stream clean? Steam clean. Ooh. Uh, it's a sorcery, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. So a nice little bounce spell. And then uh, the creature side is the two mana. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value three or less, Scalding Viper deals one damage to that player. So this is a kind of a great card on uh, multiple axes. You can bounce something early on to set up getting Niv Miss it out a little later and then, or even getting this down. Actually, that's a good point. With Niv Visit being six mana, you're going to want to do a lot of these things that I'm bringing up either after he comes out or before. And this is a great instance of both sides you can do before. You bounce something and then you cast Scalding Viper. Then you play Niv Mizzet past the turn and you're going to deal at least 
uh, one, two, three, even four maybe sometimes around the table of people casting those spells with mana value three or less, dealing that damage to that player and you drawing a card. So that's pretty good. Uh, this is a card that I would say play after you play Niv-Mizzet. Flame Rift. This is a two mana sorcery. I have it in my Rakdos Lord of Riots deck. Um, it's a two mana sorcery that says deal four damage to each player. So with Niv Miss It Out, that's deal four damage to each player, including yourself, sure. But then that is draw 12, if my math is great. Um, two mana draw 12, sounds good to me. This, I'll, I'll put it this way, this deck you're gonna make people mad, so if you're gonna make people mad, you might as well end the game doing it or do it well. Um, I don't love playing decks or playing against decks that make people mad and then do nothing with it. Hey, I just did something that made everybody mad and I don't really have a plan to win. Uh, that's when people just turn on you and that's when I tend to fall out of love with decks because I'm like, why would I play this? Everybody just hates it. This deck, with dealing the damage, drawing the cards, is going to hyper uh, uh, bring up the game to a fast pace, and that way it, it can end everything. I'm going to move on to the next one. Shivan Gorge is a land, so there you go. You have a land slot that also helps power up your commander. It is a legendary land, taps for a colorless, or you can tap two and red and tap it. It deals one damage to each opponent. So with your commander out, three damage, draw three for three, basically four mana. It's not that bad. And again, if you're digging for answers, if you're holding up uh, counter magic with the, you know, the three mana, you're just holding it all up, uh, passing the turn. This is a good way to be like, okay, nobody did anything or I need to draw some more cards right now. Boom. And it's just a land slot. Nothing better than that. Fiery Confit Confidence? <laughs> I'm not confident I said that right. Fiery Confluence is two red red for a sorcery. Choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. It deals one damage to each creature, two damage to each opponent, or destroy target artifact. So like I was saying before, this works on a lot of different axes. I'm going to stop saying that. Um... But basically, you can do a little mini board wipe, you can destroy some artifacts, or you could deal six damage to each opponent if you choose that mode all three times, or you can kind of hodgepodge it. So I think it's just a good uh, kind of value play in the deck really at any point in the game, and for only 30 cents, I'm liking it. Tectonic Hazard is a newer one. A lot of cards do this, but I picked this one because it's newer, so thus it's cheaper. It is one mana for a sorcery. It deals one damage to each opponent and each creature they control. So there you go. Uh, just one mana, maybe do a little mini board wipe and then draw three cards. I know there's a card out there that is one mana, draw three. That's pretty good. I think it's banned though. Uh, Kessig... Flame Breather. This is another card that there's a lot of uh, similar effects like this in Commander or this format, but this one, again, is a bit cheaper than a lot of those other ones. It is one in a red for a Human Shaman. 1-3, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it deals one damage to each opponent. So it just turns all of your other plays, you know, you bounce something, you counter something, whatever, you know, a mana rock, it turns that into the damage. You get this down before Niv, and then past then, you're dealing one damage to each opponent, so everything turns into draw three. That's great. Or draw four, draw five. I don't know how many people you play with. Sometimes my play group, we play with six people. It's crazy, but we find ways. Uh, Earthquake is the next one. This is a classic X and a red for a sorcery. Earthquake deals X damage to each opponent with each creature without flying and each player it would also deal damage to each opponent without flying because i don't know any opponents ever that had flying um so this is great it's a it's a board wipe but at the same time you're gonna draw cards and kind of reaccrue value um you know that's part of the issue with some board wipes is you cast it you spend your whole t your, your whole turn and then you don't really have a way to bounce back from that while everybody else rebuilds this is a way to 
wipe some of the board, draw some of the cards, and then you can excel your plan from there. Also, it's each creature without flying. niv it has flying, so it's a great way to make sure that stays on the board at the very least. Virtue of Courage. Uh, I would have thought these virtues, all of them, were going to be expensive, but this one is hovering around 80 cents right now. Uh, it's another adventure, so I'm going to read the adventure side first. It is Embreth Blaze for one and a red instant. Uh, it deals two damage to any target. So it's a little shock for a little overcosted, uh, being two mana, but then you can cast it on its other side. And it is, it says as an enchantment, whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, you may exile that many cards from the top of your library. You may play those cards this turn. This is something I, I would, if I was playing this deck, I would do the adventure side early on, get Niv miss it out, then drop this enchantment the next turn, do something that's going to deal a bunch of damage to people. And it is basically like, hey, I'm going to try and win the game right now. I just drew a bunch of cards. I just exiled a bunch of cards from the top of my library. And I have so much access to my resources. Let's try and close this game out. So that's how I would play this. And I would still pick it up because it's a pretty good include for a lot of decks. Prisoner's Dilemma. Okay. When I put this in here, I said I was not going to go into this deeply because it's very hard to explain. It's literally a, a psychological test, the prisoner's dilemma, and they made it into a card. So I obviously I can't explain in this short video what you should do 100% of the time, but I'm just going to read it and then you can see that you'll draw a bunch of cards. That's it. Uh, so it is three red red for a sorcery it has flashback for five red red and then each opponent secretly chooses silence or snitch then the choices are revealed if each opponent chose silence prisoner's dilemma deals four damage to each of them if each opponent chose snitch prisoner's dilemma deals eight damage to each of them otherwise prisoner prisoner's dilemma deals 12 damage to each opponent who chose silence so it's basically you want everybody to choose silence, so you take the least amount of damage. But if you don't want to take any damage, you might snitch, and then it's going to deal 12 damage. It, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Either way, it's going to deal from anywhere from 4 to 12 damage to a bunch of opponents. That's a lot of cards. I'm moving on from this. I almost didn't include this because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to, going to explain it but it is only a dollar and it would be great in this deck. So it's in there. Uh, Chandra's Incinerator. This is five and a red for an elemental six, six. It's, it costs X less where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponents this turn. It has trample and whenever a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent, Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. This is just again adding value to any of your burn spells that you cast um or anything because it's just it'll trigger off of non-combat damage so anytime one of your things like the kessig uh whatever his name is trailblazer uh deals one damage to each opponent you can then point that damage to one of their creatures or planeswalkers so it's a good value piece and in in the right situation it could be a one mana six six with trample not you you can't scoff scoff at that or scuff at it don't do either fevered visions i like this card a lot this is uh screams classic commander to me uh as someone who played nekazar back when that came out uh fevered visions was like the ooh that's one of the best cards in the deck and it's really good here it is one blue red that says at the beginning of each player's end step that player draws a card if the player is your opponent and has four or more cards in hand, Fevered Visions deals two damage to them. So it's a way for you to draw some cards, them to draw some cards, but also, uh, and get it down before Niv miss it, but it's one of those things where you get it down, you get Niv out, you pass the turn. At the beginning of each player's end step, they're going to draw that card if they have the more, you know, you, you get what I'm saying here around the table. You could draw anything from six to just two cards, but it's still a good value piece. Sun spine links is two red, red for an elemental cat 
5-4 that says players can't gain life, damage can't be prevented. So that alone, as I was saying before, this is one of those decks that's going to make people mad at you and they're going to want to accrue some of that life that you're taking from them back. This is a great way to drop this down and say, all right, let's stop all of this. The game is on a clock and no one's winding that back right now. But it, so if that is all it was that it said, if that is all it said, as I say so well, um, it would be great in the deck, but it does something else. When it enters, it deals damage to each player, so yourself included, equal to the number of non-basic lands that player controls. This can end the game <laughs> with you included, but it can end the game for some players. You're only in a two color deck, so you might be running some basics if you're doing um, some budget stuff. So uh, this could end the game for some other three, four, five color decks out there. Uh, I highly recommend picking this up because it's only a dollar fifty right now, and uh, it is very similar to Price of Progress, which I would love to put in this deck, uh, but it's a little expensive right now. But this works on a lot of different modes for what this deck can be, uh, or this uh, yeah deck can be. But also with it being four mana, you can get it down. The Niv, it's really nice. Pick it up now while you still can. And then the final one, this is kind of the splurge for the deck. Um, if you ask me, other than doing Dragon's Approach and the other Nivs to go infinite and everything, this deck would be a de Descent into Avernus deck. Um, it is an enchantment that, like I said, it speeds up the game and that's what this deck and the cards that I've found want to do. So if I would splurge on one card, it would be this card. and. I've played with this card. It's really good and it's very scary. I will stop burying the lead. Descent into Avernus is two and a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, put two descent counters on Descent into Avernus. Then each player creates X treasure tokens and Descent into Avernus deals X damage to each player where X is the number of descent counters on Descent into Avernus. What this basically can do for you in this deck is get it down as early as turn three, let it get a bunch of counters, put Niv Mizzet down, get to your next turn. At that point, it'll have a lot of counters. It'll deal a lot of damage to people. You're going to make a bunch of treasure tokens, draw an insane amount of cards, and that is that turn. That is the turn that you kind of go all in. Push all of your chips. You're, you're at the table saying, if this doesn't win me the game, then it doesn't win me the game, but we're going all in. You got a bunch of mana, got a bunch of cards. I'm going to try and win. Yes, other people are getting treasures, so it will give them a fighting chance to have interaction and everything, but that's why you need to run interaction. Your negates, your offers you can't refuse, and other things like that to protect that one big turn that you're going to try and win the game and Descent to Avernus is how you're going to do it. So if I would say any any card other than the ones that we talked about at the start of this, pick up this card. And if you hate playing this deck or if probably more than likely other people hate playing against this deck, Descent into Avernus is really nice to put in uh, aggro decks. Trust me, I, I like it a lot and I think you will too. So that is everything I'm going to talk about today. Um, if you want to take a look at more of the cards, it's in the description and my architect. I think it's you know one of the things that pops up at right right it now. Um, so let me know what you think. If you want to put some different cards in here, take it in a different direction, or uh, if you disagree with me, you can tell me. I can take it. But thank you everybody, uh, and you will be seeing some more foundations. Uh, videos from me in the future. I was just feeling like, am I forgetting anything? I, I think I'm, I can tease the fact that we didn't get any commander decks in the foundations rotation for their products. So maybe I, I'll throw together four or maybe two. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not set on it completely yet. It's not, the set isn't even spoiled yet, but I might throw together some pre-cons. For you guys if you want to pick them up for around $40. So let me know if that's something you would like to see and I will see you guys next time in the fort.